I'd like to begin with a quote by V.S. Ramachandran, who was a neuroscientist at the University of California in San Diego. Ramachandran says, your body is a phantom, one that is created purely out of convenience by your brain. To paraphrase that, your body is created by your mind. Your body is an illusion. That means that pain can be largely an illusion. So what Ramachandran has cleverly done is he's created a new illusion. Actually, he's created many new illusions. And what he does is he uses optical illusions by using mirrors. And once you create another illusion, you leave the old illusion, which means you short circuit all of the original pain pathways. Your perception is therefore completely different. Your perception of your own body is different, categorically different. And you instantaneously create new neural pathways, ones which do not trigger the pain pathways. So a lot of people who have fibromyalgia or phantom limb pain or any kind of pain, it's related to often an initial injury, but that injury may have healed weeks ago, it may have healed months ago, it may have healed a few decades ago, and the pain is either still there or possibly even worse, sometimes even much worse. What's going on is inside the mind. Neurologically, what can happen is an endless loop of pain perception in the mind, which is an illusion. It doesn't feel like an illusion, it feels like a reality. And therefore it is a reality. If it feels like a reality, it is a reality. What you can do is simply create another illusion. Another reality is, would be another way of stating that. From a neurophysiological standpoint, what happens when you create a new illusion about your own body is that you begin to create new neural pathways. New neural pathways that both perceive your body and control your body. That means your perception of pain is fundamentally altered. It also means that your muscle tone is fundamentally altered. Pain is inextricably linked, I believe strongly, it's inextricably linked to excessive muscle tone or what we commonly refer to as tension. What uh, Dr. Ramachandran has been doing in his laboratory is he uses a mirror and the mirror is placed in the center. And if I were to, for example, if I had pain in my right arm, I would place the mirror in the center and I would look at the reflection of my left arm in the mirror. Now, looking at the reflection, I know that that's not my right arm in the mirror. I know it's a reflection of my left arm. But only part of me knows that, and that part that knows that, or believes that, is my thinking mind, which is really just a small part of the mind. The rest of my mind looks in the mirror and sees that that is my right hand. That means that as soon as I start to move my left hand, and I'm looking at the what appears to be the reflection, I immediately begin to trigger the left hemisphere of my brain. The left hemisphere is what controls the right arm and right hand. It not only controls it, but it perceives the right hand and right arm. So it, it's both perception and control is crucially influenced instantaneously. And that means an instantaneous cascade of new neural pathways. Now, in this illusion, all the pain circuits are short-circuited because the perception of pain in my right arm is inextricably linked with the original illusion. The original illusion being that my right arm always hurts. That's an illusion. You could say that's a reality. We're interchanging the two words here. 
we create a new illusion, which is that's a new right arm, and it doesn't hurt. It feels completely different. And when we remove the mirror, we're, we could say we're, we're back to the original illusion, the original reality, but we're not. We're actually in a third reality. And the third reality is the old reality, but with all the new reality inputs, meaning all the new neural pathways that reinforce coordination, balance, strength, agility, and the new reality that is minus the pain. So we have the third reality. And as we continue to play with the optical illusion, we begin to create a larger and larger third reality, and that eventually becomes our dominant reality. Ramifications for somebody with chronic pain is that they will have less and less pain. It's possible that eventually they will have no pain. And not only that, but they will begin to become more coordinated. They will have less and less excessive tension in their muscles. Because if you have high muscle tone, it means certain muscles are pulling too hard. If they're pulling too hard, it decreases the precision of movement. It makes it uncoordinated. Increased coordination, better balance, more mobility, more range of motion, more possibilities for the organism, meaning you, the person doing them, um, to move in life. Moshe Feldenkrais, whose uh, work has highly influenced what I'm doing here, is often quoted as saying, life without movement is unthinkable. <laughs>